Hey everyone, welcome to EduDose, your destination for simplified pharmaceutical learning. I'm Dr. Satish Polshetiwar, and today I'm diving into one of the most crucial concepts in pharmacokinetics and regulatory affairs, bioavailability and bioequivalence studies. Whether you're a B. Farm or M. Farm student, understanding this is absolutely key if you want to rock drug development and approval. Let's start with bioavailability or BA, as we like to call it. It's basically a measure of how much and how fast the active drug ingredient gets absorbed into your bloodstream after you take a dose. Think about this. You swallow a 500 mg paracetamol tablet, how much of that actually enters your blood and how quickly? That's bioavailability in action. Now, there are two flavors here, absolute and relative bioavailability. Absolute compares the bioavailability of a drug given by a non-intravenous route like orally to the same drug given intravenously. IV administration is always considered 100% bioavailable, by the way. Relative bioavailability, on the other hand, compares two non-IV products like two different brands of the same tablet. Here's the equation you need to remember. BA percent equals AUC underscore oral divided by AUC underscore IVOI times dose underscore IV divided by dose underscore oral times 100. Simple, right? Now moving on, let's talk about bioequivalence, or B. Bioequivalence means that two drug products release the active ingredient into the bloodstream at the same rate and to the same extent. In simple terms, if a generic drug gives you the same blood levels as the branded drug, they're bioequivalent. Why does this matter? Because it allows regulatory agencies like the US FDA or CDSCO to approve cheaper generic versions without having to repeat all those expensive clinical trials. That means more affordable medicines for everyone. The main parameters compared in BE studies are Cmax, which is peak plasma concentration, Tmax, the time it takes to reach that peak, and AUC, or area under the plasma concentration curve, which measures total exposure. For a test and a reference product to be considered bioequivalent, the 90% confidence interval of Cmax and AUC should fall within 80% to 125% of the reference product. So, why do we even conduct BAB studies? They're essential for new drug approvals, for approving generics, and for any changes after approval, like switching the manufacturing site. These studies keep patients safe, make sure drugs work as they should, and help keep costs down. Let's break down how a BAB study is actually done. You recruit healthy volunteers, usually aged 18 to 55, and make sure they consent. Then, you run a crossover study. One group gets the test drug, the other gets the reference product. After a washout period, usually about a week or two to clear out the drug, the groups switch. Blood samples get collected at specific times, and the plasma drug concentrations are measured with advanced techniques like HPLC or LCMS slash MS. Then pharmacokinetic parameters like Cmax, Tmax, and AUC are calculated and compared. Of course, regulatory guidelines are strict, Agencies like the US FDA, EMA in Europe, and CDSCO in India all have clear rules. Statistical analysis is done, usually using ANOVA and the 90% confidence interval method. If your drug falls within that 80-125% window for CMAX and AUC, congrats, it's bioequivalent. Let me give you a real-life example. Suppose a company makes a generic version of Atorvastatin 10 mg. They need to prove it's equivalent to Lipitor registered trademark. So they run a B study and get Cmax at 104% and AUC at 96% compared to the reference both well within the 80-125% range. Result? The generic gets approved. To wrap up, bioavailability tells us how much of a drug reaches your bloodstream. Bioequivalence ensures that generics work just as well as branded drugs. These studies protect patients and pave the way for affordable medicines. As pharmacy students, understanding BAB is foundational for careers in regulatory affairs, clinical research, formulation development, or quality assurance. If you found this helpful, smash that like button, subscribe to EduDose for more simplified pharma topics, and drop your questions or suggestions in the comments below. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, Dr. Satish Polshetiwar, signing off.
If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, like, and share it with others who'd benefit. See you in the next video.